Hi everyone, my name is Jake Beardsley. I'm a senior math and economics major at Roanoke College, and today I'll be talking to you about the Harden effect and quantifying the impact of drawing fouls in the NBA using my IDF metric. To start, I'll give you a little bit of background on my project. I was working a women's basketball game as part of Roanoke's stat crew, where we go to games for Roanoke and take down statistics and provide analysis to coaches. One of our players managed to get the opposing team's best player to foul her three times in pretty quick succession. And now in college basketball, if you foul a player five times, you get thrown out of the game. So the opposing team's coach had to sit their best player. This had a massive impact on the game because we went ahead and ran away with it since they didn't have their best player in. And I wanted to see, okay, is there numerical evidence of this same phenomenon that I watched at a D3 women's game at the professional level in the NBA? To that end, I started with play-by-play -play data from the 2018-2019 season, which was the most recent NBA season that COVID didn't screw with. And I ended up getting this data from basketballreference.com. They've got a lot of really good data for almost every sport. I also used R and R Studio to wrangle my data and build my graphics. So to that end, I began by looking at how many fouls a player drew over the course of the 2019 season and compare that to their player efficiency rating. For anybody who isn't familiar with more advanced basketball stats, that's the most commonly used measure of overall player performance to, to kind of get how good is this player. So you can see here, there's definitely a relationship between fouls drawn and PER, but it isn't super strong. It only has an R value of 0.31. And so I wanted to see, okay, is there a better way to measure this than just looking at how many fouls a player draws in the abstract? Which brings me to my project's real main focus, which was building the impact via drawing fouls metric. This is meant to be a much better indicator of player performance if you're really wanting to focus in on a player's offensive impact through getting other players to foul them. Now, the major novel idea behind this is a target foul where a player manages to get an opposing player to foul them more than once over the course of the game. So if James Harden gets LeBron to foul him three times in a game, that's a lot better than if he gets LeBron and Alex Caruso and Anthony Davis to foul him once each. To build this metric, I really focused on three main components. How many fouls does a player draw over the course of the season? That's still important. How many free throws does that player make? It's really important because that's the way that you convert getting fouled into points to help win the game, and this target value, which is equal to the sum of fouls beyond the first a player draws on a specific player, which is then summed for each opposing player. Basically, if I draw two fouls on one player, two fouls on another player, and one foul on another player, my target value for that game is two, because I had an extra foul on uh, player A and an extra foul on player B. I also ended up normalizing the... Uh, statistic based on minutes, given that not every player in the NBA plays the same amount of minutes, and if a player gets hurt halfway through the season and they're playing really, really well, we don't want to disqualify them just because they got hurt. This brings us to the question of looking at relationships between the IDF and player performance metrics like PER, as discussed above. Now, if you look here, we're comparing the two plots, my first one from a couple slides ago, looking at fouls drawn versus PER, and this new plot comparing IDF to PER. And right here, we can see there's a much, much stronger linear relationship between IDF and player efficiency rating. We've got an R value of roughly 0.7, which is fantastic. We also don't really see the same clustering near the bottom of the graph by players at positions played by smaller players like shooting guards here in the purple. As far as future work is concerned, I definitely plan to build this metric for more than just the 2019 season to look at how a player's IDF value changes from college to the NBA to see if maybe we can be drafting players better and how a player's IDF impacts their career trajectory and how a player's IDF value changes over the course of their career. Maybe players have really high IDF values early in their career and they drop as they get older, or maybe they get a little bit craftier as they get older and, and seem to increase. So to, to that same end, as, as I mentioned earlier, Giannis Antetokounmpo and James Harden were both pretty underrated when they came into the league, but they've turned out to both be MVPs, final MVPs, defensive player of the year, fantastic players in the NBA, and they currently have the second and third highest IDF values in the league, respectively. So maybe we're missing something that the IDF can, can answer. So I'll be working on these things over the next year and ideally into graduate school as well. Thank you guys for your time.